Prince Daniel of Sweden participates in a meeting with kidney researchers in Stockholm. King Harald V of Norway discharged from the hospital in Oslo. The Prince of Wales opens a new youth center in London. And Prince Albert II of Monaco celebrates his 66th birthday in Monacoville. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Thursday, March 14th, 2024. In Monacoville, His Serene Highness, Prince Albert II of Monaco, celebrated his 66th birthday. On the occasion of his special day, hundreds of Monegasques, residents, local school children, and members of the prince's government arrived on the Place du Palais at the Palais Poncier de Monaco to wish the Sovereign Prince a very happy birthday. At noon, the Sovereign Prince, accompanied by Her Serene Highness, Princess Charlene of Monaco, His Serene Highness, Hereditary Prince Jacques of Monaco, and Her Serene Highness, Princess Gabriella of Monaco, appeared in the Salon de Glace window to wave to the people. Moments later, the Sovereign Prince family arrived in the Place as the people erupted with cheers and applause while waving the flag of the Principality of Monaco. Naturally, there was a giant birthday cake. As the Sovereign Prince was cutting a slice of his birthday cake, the Prince's Carabinieri Orchestra played Happy Birthday. Thereafter, the Sovereign Prince family spent time meeting with the people, shaking their hands and, well, generally having a fabulous time. In the afternoon, a private birthday party was held in the Salon de Glace. Guests attending from left to right, Mr. Gareth Woodstock and his two daughters, Mrs. Tatiana Santa Domingo Casaragi, Mr. Andrea Casaragi, Mr. Ben Stratmon, Mr. Pierre Casaragi, Mrs. Beatrice Borromeo Casaragi and their two children, Princess Alexandra of Hanover, His Serene Highness, Hereditary Prince Jacques of Monaco, her Serene Highness, Princess Gabriella of Monaco. Her Serene Highness, Princess Charlene of Monaco. Her Serene Highness, Princess Stephanie of Monaco. Miss Camille Gottlieb. Her Royal Highness, Princess Caroline of Hanover and her two grandchildren. Mr. Louis Ducroy. Mrs. Marie Ducroy. Mrs. Charlotte Casaragi Rassam. Miss Pauline Ducroy. Miss Melanie Antoinette Costello de Massey and two close friends of the Sovereign Prince. And with that, happy birthday, Your Serene Highness. I hope you had a wonderful day. On Wednesday, the Sovereign Prince, as patron of the Monaco Mediterranean Foundation, attended a lecture entitled The Bible and Ecology with the Chief Rabbi of France, Mr. Chaim Korsha, held at the One Monte Carlo. Meanwhile, Her Royal Highness, Princess Caroline of Hanover, attended the event entitled The Palace and the Presidents, reading by the Monte Carlo Ireland Arts with journalist Miss Flora McCarthy, held at the Princess Grace Irish Library in Monacoville. On Tuesday, the Sovereign Prince received letters of credence from newly appointed ambassadors to the Principality of Monaco in the Salon de Glace at the Palais Poncier de Monaco in Monacoville. The newly appointed ambassadors are from the Slovak Republic, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, the Kingdom of Belgium, and Romania. Their Majesties, King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain, presided over the Premios Nacionales de Investigación 2023 held at the Palacio Ducal de los Boja in Gandia. The awards, worth 30,000 euros, are the most important in Spain in the field of scientific research. Quote, The award honors researchers in Spain who stand out for their careers and international relevance in the respective areas. They also recognize the merit of young people with a maximum age of 40, who have achieved relevant achievements in the early stages of their careers. After the award ceremony, their majesties visited the Gandia City Hall, where they met with members of the city council 
and signed the Book of Honor. This morning, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, officially opened the new onside youth zone, West, in the London borough of Hammersmith and Fulham. West stands for where everyone sticks together and was named by the local young people. According to Kensington Palace, West Youth Zone is, quote, staffed by skilled and dedicated youth workers who are committed to supporting young people from across West London to help them develop the skills and confidence that they need to achieve their dreams. The new facility includes a sports hall, a fitness center, indoor climbing wall, teaching kitchen, performing arts studio, and a cafe that will serve nutritious meals, costing no more than one pound. West was developed by One Side, a national youth-centered charity whose mission is to empower young people to lead positive, fulfilling lives by providing access to state-of-the-art spaces and exceptional life-changing youth work in areas where they are needed the most. End quote. During today's opening, the prince was given a tour of the youth zone, including the teaching kitchen and sports hall, and spent time meeting with students from a local primary school, as well as West's Young People's Development Group, who were involved in shaping the design and the facilities in the news center. The visit ended with the prince unveiling a commemorative plaque. Yay, a plaque unveiling. In Birmingham, their Royal Highnesses, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh, attended Day 3 of the All England Open Badminton Championships on the occasion of the 125th anniversary of the sports tournament. In Nijmegen, Her Majesty, Queen Maxima of the Netherlands, gave the keynote speech during the 6th edition of the National Circular Economy Conference. The conference, organized by the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management, was held under the theme, From Good Start to Booming Business, Circular as a New Standard. According to RVD, the National Circular Economy Conference marks the start of the Circular Economy Week. Companies, governments, social organizations, research institutions, and other people interested in the circular economy will gather to discuss the opportunities and challenges of a circular economy. In her speech, the Queen spoke about the importance of, quote, transitioning from linear to circular economy. Circular means that products are used for a longer time and that the raw materials, as opposed to linear, are reused to make new products, end quote. On Wednesday in Mamel, his Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg presided over the opening ceremony of Eurosport 2024. The three-day sporting event will gather 540 students from 18 schools in Germany, Belgium, Spain, Italy, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. The participants will compete against each other in various sporting events, including volleyball, football, and badminton, to name a few. In Oslo, the Royal Court of Norway announced that His Majesty King Harald V of Norway was discharged from the hospital this morning and is doing well. The King will be on sick leave until Monday, April 8th, for rest and recuperation. His Royal Highness Crown Prince Haakon of Norway will remain as regent and will carry out the King's constitutional duties during this period. Wonderful news. And finally, His Royal Highness Prince Daniel of Sweden participated in a meeting with researchers in kidney medicine and transplantation on the occasion of World Kidney Day 2024 at the Royal Palace. World Kidney Day is a global campaign to raise awareness and increase knowledge about kidney diseases. The day is initiated by the International Society of Nephrology and the International Federation of Kidney Foundations. The theme of this year's World Kidney Day is Kidney Health for All, 
advancing equitable access to care, and optimal medication practice. According to the Royal Court of Sweden, during the meeting, the prince learned about the latest in Swedish kidney and transplantation research. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I will be back on Saturday, March 16th, with all the latest royal news, including events that I missed this week, such as Her Majesty Queen Margrethe of Denmark's attendance at the Academy Council's Foundation Party in Copenhagen, and the Prince of Wales' attendance at the Diana Legacy Awards in London this evening. So, I hope you all will join me on Saturday. Until then, I sincerely wish each and every one of you a wonderful afternoon. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, comment below, and click on the notification bell so you won't miss a new episode. Again, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I will see you all on Saturday. Take care.